Well, here's a life or death story. Maths teacher Billy Jo Button almost died in her classroom after suffering a severe allergic reaction and it left her completely unable to breathe. But thanks to her school's supply of adrenaline pens, she was kept alive just long enough to reach hospital where she made a full recovery. And Billy Jo now wants every school in the country to be legally required to stock these life-saving adrenaline pens and to know how to use them. And she joins us now alongside leading allergy doctor, Professor Adam Fox. Well, Hi. good morning to both of you. Morning. Billy Joe, good, good, good morning to you. <laughs> Thank you. Because too often we talk about allergy and the fatal consequences of it. And for you, that could have been the outcome, except for the fact that there were adrenaline pens on site you actually credit saving your life, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. There is no doubt in my mind that I wouldn't be here today. I had two adrenaline pens on me. One I took to the medical centre, um, and then the other one was in my bag in my classroom. Mm. But the, the two that are in the kit medical on the wall in our medical centre at Windlesham House are... In my mind, no doubt, they, they saved my life. Do you know what you reacted to? Unfortunately not. No. Um, years ago, I was treated at the Brompton Hospital and I spent weeks there trying to find out what I'm allergic to. They told me I have idi idiophatic anaphylaxis. Right. Um, I spent a lot of my 20s, 30s having allergic reactions in and out of hospital, finding out what I'm allergic to. It's terrifying, never knowing if it's going to happen. Can you just take us through what happened on this particular day, the way where you nearly died? Yeah, so on the day I was taking... I was driving to school mm -hmm. any other morning, teacher, up early. My children were in the back of the car, um, didn't have time for breakfast, coffee on the go. Started to feel quite unwell on the way to school driving, lightheaded, um, you know, couldn't breathe properly. Parked the car, took my children into school. I went to my maths room at Windlesham House and I started to feel really unwell. My ears were itching, my nose was swelling and I, could, I had an audible wheeze, so I, I couldn't breathe. Mm. Lots of children were starting to come into my classroom. Mm. I had their welfare in mind because I thought if I have a full-on anaphylactic shock here in front of all these children, it's going to be catastrophic. How old, how old were they? What were the age group? So I teach anywhere from five to eight. Oh, yeah, well, that would have been a big deal in front of them. So year five to eight. Right. So they well, can be... It's distressing for any child yeah. to see that. Yeah. So you then, you didn't know what it was that you were having a reaction to. Presumably you knew that you were going into anaphylaxis, so you knew you needed to inject yourself with adrenaline. Many, many people with these allergic um, symptoms do carry a pen with them, but as you found out, one pen sometimes is not enough. No, it's not enough. And unfortunately, or fortunately, you could say I've lived with this for a long time. Um, I had my first aller allergic reaction when I was 17. Mm -hmm. I found out over time what some, some of the things that I'm allergic to, but not always. Um, so I was able to go to our medical centre where we have these kits and we have adrenaline pens available. Um, but I only had one. They mm -hmm. needed two. And then we needed a defib. If they'd have been together on a wall, yeah. it would have been more accessible. Yeah. So well, you fortunate. needed a defib, which is a defibrillator, which restarts your... They, uh, what, did, what did that do? Sorry, I'm, I'm yeah. assuming I know, but tell me. It's OK. So our school went into lockdown. Uh, so Windersham House, all the children were in assembly. They had to put the school into lockdown, keep all the children in one place. SLT came and were trying to coordinate everybody. One of our staff ran to the sports hall to get the defibrillator. Luckily, there was a, one of the students that I teach, um, their mum is a doctor, and she came in to help the nurse that's on site. Mm. Because it's a scary thing, having to do that on your own. Mm. At that point, I was, on, I was in and out of consciousness. They got the defib out to put onto my heart to see what my heart rate was doing. Mm -hmm. um, so it didn't, ha didn't need to restart my heart, right. but the doctor did have to put her mouth over my mouth and breathe for me. Right. Dr Fox, <clears throat> as I said in the, going into the break a few minutes ago, it would just seem to be a no-brainer uh, for every school to be compelled to have these, uh, these pens um, you know, dotted around the building. Uh, because we know, don't we, that, that some children who have an allergic reaction for the first time have never displayed any, any allergy problems in the past. It can happen like that. 
That's absolutely right. So we know that if you ask children who have food allergies, almost 20% of them will tell you that they've had a reaction at school. Mm. And in fact, school is the most common place that they're going to have a reaction outside of the home. Right. So it does make a lot of sense to have better availability. Sadly, we've learned the hard way through coroner's inquests that mm -hmm. it doesn't always go well at school and that sometimes the pens aren't available or they're available but they're out of date. And prior to 2017, when the law changed and allowed schools to have their own pens, you had these crazy situations where they might have somebody else's adrenaline pens but were reticent to use them on a different child who had a reaction. Now, that, that's madness. And that law was changed in 2017. So in 2017, yeah. schools are allowed to have their own generic adrenaline pens, which they can use. Initially, it was, it was suggested it could be on anyone who had been prescribed adrenaline if, for some reason, they couldn't easily get access to it. Then there was a clarification more re recently, which made a lot more sense, which was essentially, you can use these pens on anybody who's having an allergic right. reaction. And then, let's, let's establish... I mean, for a start, I just want to pay tribute to this chap who set up the kit yes. which had the pens yes. in it, which saved your life. His name's Zach Marks. He's in his 20s. Yeah. He's just a young man. And he lives with a severe nut allergy. And so he began a business which meant that you could subscribe to get these pens. But, Professor Fox, you want these pens to be mandatory in all schools. Now, that presumably is something that the NHS could provide, that, that these pens could be available. So, at the moment, it's a voluntary scheme. So, that was it's still a huge, uh, a huge advance in 2017 mm. when they, schools are allowed to do it, but we really don't have any sense of how many schools have taken that opportunity. Mm. We know that there's plenty that haven't. Um, if it was mandatory, it was part of an Ofsted inspection, for example, mm. then uptake would be a lot better. And Why wouldn't they take safer. it up, though? To me, it's like not having a fire extinguisher. It's just bizarre. Well, I think you have to step back a little bit, and actually the reality of it is, is that many schools don't have proper um, allergy policies even in place. There's a huge issue around the inconsistency of allergy policies in different schools. Mm. There's been a lot of work recently. Allergy charities have made model policies that make it easier for schools to have their own policy. Mm -hmm. Just last week, the Department for Education um, sent an, an important mailing around what's called the School's Allergy Code, developed by the Benedict Blythe Foundation and the Allergy Team. So there's a lot of really good stuff happening, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, a lot of schools still don't take this And am seriously. I right in thinking that, that the uh, incidence of allergic attacks is on the rise? There's been a really marked increase in the number of episodes of anaphylaxis Why showing would that up be? in the it, The easiest explanation would be to say, well, there must be more allergy around, but actually the evidence doesn't really support the idea that there's just more allergy than there was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, there was a big increase over the last 30 or 40 years. That seems to have plateaued. It's about 6% of kids have a food allergy now. That, that high? It's, yes, yeah, so it's, it's one of the most common chronic diseases of childhood. Mm -hmm. We think that there's a better recognition of people that when they're having an allergic reaction, it needs to be taken seriously and it needs right. to be taken to an emergency department. You have a demonstration <clears throat> adrenaline pen. Mm. Those who are diagnosed with um, anaphylaxis, potential anaphylaxis, are prescribed these on the NHS. Some people feel worried about using them um, and anyone who doesn't have allergy in their family might not have a clue yeah. what to do with yeah. them. Um, can you just give us a demo? Of course. Here on so the there's two devices. One's uh, this is an EpiPen, this is a Jext. Um, the same thing, they contain adrenaline. Mm. And the important thing about adrenaline is that it works best the earliest it's given. Right. That's why we have patients carry it around with them. It just makes more sense for them mm. to have quick access to it. Right. It's a very safe drug. It's, a, it's something that your body produces naturally when you're frightened or worried about something. Um, so if you're not sure if an allergic reaction is bad enough to warrant using one, use it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can't we overdose. often say yeah. that's the sign that you should be... Th if you're thinking, is this bad enough, right. it's time to use it. <laughs> right. There's an enormous issue with adrenaline hesitancy. So people who are having significant, sometimes very significant reactions, and they're just very nervous about using it, they delay the use of it, and that's more likely to lead and to... And there's no outcome. need to be nervous There's no at need to all. be nervous. There's no, no it's a very side safe effects medicine. beyond the, the life-saving effect. That if if you... we were just to use a, a, a live adrenaline um, injection on somebody who wasn't having allergic reaction, they'd, they'd get a headache, their heart would race but it would very soon wear off. Okay. Right. Okay. There's no danger to using this on someone having an allergic reaction. Got it. If it wasn't that bad, it will still help them. So how do you use it? So I think the first thing is when do you use it? You know, when's the right sign? Any sign of anaphylaxis in younger patients, that's likely to be trouble with their breathing. Yeah. Persistent coughing, their voice changing, hoarseness, anything suggesting they're having trouble breathing, okay. it's time to get on and use it. In an older person, it's more likely you might see circulatory issues. So 
dizziness, confusion, even collapse. But, of course, younger people can get those symptoms, older people can get the Well, if that could be anything, though, couldn't it? Um, well, sudden onset in somebody with a known history of allergy, it's right. the context that's yeah. really important. Okay. It usually gives the game away. <clears throat> and it will usually be associated with the more obvious symptoms in a food allergy, somebody getting itchiness and swelling and hives around itchiness their mouth. Itchiness in the ears. I itchy Joe ears, those sorts yeah, of things. So sudden throat. onset of these yeah. sorts of symptoms, it's usually pretty clear. So you've got the pen in your hand. So... Good grip on it. Mm -hmm. Don't put your thumb over the end because there's a risk you'll put it over the wrong end and mm -hmm. get a nasty <laughs> surprise. So hold it in a fist like that. Yeah. We often say blue to the sky, orange to the thigh. Um, That's good. Safety cap off. That's important. Really important because it won't work if you don't do that. And then you're looking for the, um, a spot around two-thirds down the outside surface of the thigh where there's plenty of flesh because it needs to go into the muscle. And there's two ways of doing it. Always a good idea to have read the instructions prior to the emergency. Um, you are effectively the instructions this morning. <laughs> yes, that's right, I realise that. So um, one way of doing it is a little swing and a jab, but actually my preferred method is to find your spot two-thirds of the way down the thigh okay. and then firmly press in. And then 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Count to three if it's an EpiPen. With ejects, the advice is to count to ten. And then you can take it off. But there's no and disadvantage in overcounting. No. So no, let's no. just say ten. Yeah, ten. Count fine. to ten. Ten fine, and give it a good rub. Yeah. Make sure somebody's gone off to call for help. If they yeah. haven't already. Position is also really important. So the person should be lying down, ideally, with their feet raised. Okay. If they're more comfortable, especially if they're short of breath, they'll feel better sitting up. Yes. But don't stand. And if up. after that the symptoms begin to return at some point if before expert help arrives, and you give a second dose, you should do that in the other thigh. Is that ideally, right? yes. Not so, in the same leg. So we always recommend that if things are not clearly better within the first five minutes, five minutes, then get on and give the second about ten to twenty percent. As, as we've heard. But in the opposite the thigh. One. Ideally, give it in the opposite thigh. Right. Um, and again, make sure that help's been called. Usually, thankfully, help has arrived by the time you're thinking about the second or the third. I couldn't be clearer. I feel like we've done an enormous public service yeah. for people this morning. Um, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you, Billy Joe. Just so good to see you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, Professor. Yeah, and if, if, if people are interested and have anaphylaxis, on the Allergy UK website, there's an excellent guide Brilliant. for how to reduce okay. the risk of severe reactions. And very quickly, after you'd been to hospital, how soon were you back to normal? Well, fortunately, um, once you recover and it's an allergic reaction, it's not like having an infection or things like that. So I recovered. I was back to school within the week. So I was teaching all my pupils excellent. and back to being a mum. Fantastic stuff. Excellent. Look, if you're affected by any of the issues we're discussing, you can find advice and support at itv.com forward slash helplines. Thank you so much for joining us this Good morning.